this is Dr. Jackie Hadnock, and welcome to The Exchange. And today we're going to exchange turmoil for calm. Our subject, finding peace in the midst of the storm. And to help me with this subject is my friend, my sister, my confidant, and dynamic woman of God, Pastor Apostle Sarah White. Welcome, sis. Glad, glad to be here, my girl. I'm so glad to be here with you. Yes. You know, we roll in a lot of ways, don't we? We really do. And so today we're going to roll right here. On Let's roll with it, girls. Let's roll with it. Finding peace in the midst of the storm. So many people live their lives in turmoil, in drama. That's the word I want to use. Okay. Drama. They are drama poppers, as my daughter mm -hmm. says. And they live their lives in a constant state of turmoil, constant state of drama, tribulation, trials, never really coming out of it, but it seems like they're always repeating the cycle of uh, turmoil and never finding a place of rest and calm. You know why they like that? Because they're not real with themselves. Yes. You know, you are who you are, and you are what God created you to be. So if I'm trying to act like Michael Jackson, that's not me. That's not. A lot of people pick up other people after you not being themselves. I'm a person of fun. And I'm a am. I am what I am and who I am. So when you see me on Monday, I'm like this on Monday. I'm like this on Tuesday. I look at my problem just like, hey, I got to go through it. No matter what I, if I don't face it. I'm going to keep going through the tournament itself. And a lot of people don't want to face things. That's true. So if you never face it, what you go through, you constantly going through it. That's it. A relentless cycle. Cycle, because you never face it. Right. You know what? That would be the equivalent of being in a storm, I mean a physical storm, or a tornado. Imagine a tor someone being caught up in a tornado and always circling around and around, mm -hmm. never touching the ground, never coming out of the tornado, but living in a constant state of tornado, tsunami, whatever you want to call it, a hurricane, mm -hmm. but never finding the rest for their soul and their body. I think that would be a horrible way to exist, because that wouldn't be living, that would literally be existing. That's it, and you be a, I'm going to put it like you being a drama queen. Yeah. You seen them drama queens, and they make it worse than <laughs> anyone. Yeah, everything and is a drama. Drama, you know, and, and that's what's going on with the world today. We live in more of a drama yes. than we as peace. That's it. And when you in a drama queen, we make anything worse than what it really is. And that's sad. It is. It's truly sad. And we're not seeing it the way God said it should be. The world stays in drama. You look at the news. What did it talk about? Drama. Uh -huh. And the newspapers. Drama. drama. Television shows. Drama. drama. So what we eat? Drama. drama. So now you got a, a belly full, full a of table full of drama. drama. And we don't know how to come out. And then you wonder why people are on high blood pressure medicine, why they're taking all these anxiety pills, mm -hmm. why they're going through so much anxiety and, and depression, because now it leads to depression, it leads to insomnia. So now we're, people are taking all of these pills to make them sleep, mm -hmm. they're taking things to calm down the anxiety. So now if you take something to go to sleep, now you got to take something to get up in the Amen. morning. So now you just have a relentless cycle of pill popping, which now you've added another problem to your already overcharged dramatic life. Amen. And you know when you was talking about the pill, you know what came to me? I thought about the word. If we eat the word like we eat these pills, sister, we wouldn't be in drama. That's true. Because the word could be the pill. That could be. The word would be the pill, and you've come out of a lot of that stuff Amen. because you lay it down. Amen. And so many people are picking up the wrong things. Mm -hmm. For every situation, they pick up a pill for it. Some people take five and six, ten pills a day. Mm -hmm. and, and pills don't cure the problem. It's sometimes just a mask for the problem. Yes. It covers up whatever your anxieties are. So now right. you're on these anti-anxiety pills. Yes. The minute you start feeling all wiggly and anxious, you pop a pill. Yes. And then it calms you down. Why not just address the situation? 
is because, you know, I look around, I look at a lot of people, I talk to a lot of people. People don't want to face reality with themselves. You know, it's a place, if I never face me, I will always find something to try to cover me. Absolutely. And this is what's wrong with the world today. We don't face nothing. If I'm what I am, if I'm a drama queen, I'm a drama queen. So I need to face myself and say, I'm just a drama queen. And, and I need to do something about me being such a drama queen. And so if I never meant that, well, I can't get no help. That's right. The, one of the biggest proponents of what we're talking about is the fact that we don't face the enemy within us. Right. And that enemy, it can take on any shape, form, or fashion, and it will continually grow and add to itself. Yes. It can multiply daily. Amen. And then become a tornado. Yeah. Now you're living in that tornado again. Right. And so you're going through different cycles. Who are you today, Jackie? I see you one day, you're laughing, you're smiling, next day you're crying. Who? Who? Be like that. Who are you? Are you? And then people don't know how to deal with you. Mm -mm. So we need to, people need to address the issues that cause them to be in this tornado. Right. Because if you're caught in the midst of a storm, if you're caught in the midst of this wind, rain, and turmoil, the stress testing, because if you can't make it through the things you're going through now, when the really hard trials and tribulations come, those people will fold, commit suicide, or worse. Mm -hmm. That's why so many people are out here killing their co-workers because they couldn't take the pressures from the job. That's why men are killing their wives, wives are killing their husbands, they're killing their children because they can't take the pressures that they have buried under the rug for so long. And that's true because then you know, as you were talking, so you don't really know you. You know how you could pretend so long with life that you will? Yes. And I got it so going on in my household. I don't know all the time your household's in a torment. And you won't admit that it's, it's not like that. That's right. And that's why people can't deal with life because they want to have a fantasy world. That's it. And live in that fantasy. And live in a fantasy world. So if I'm in that fantasy world and when it starts turning down, I can't put it back up, then you really see who I really and that's right. And I can't face you facing me who I am. Because right. I don't pretend so long that I, I mm -hmm. I'm this. I'm wearing a mask. I'm mad and it how can I say it's breaking the loose. Yes. And I can't pick up the pieces and put it back fast enough. That's right. So Ooh, I feel cracking. the spirit of God on this. Your, 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 your mask is cracking. Yes. You're trying to hold on to that facade that you've portrayed for so long. And, you know, I've got it all together. I'm this, I'm so-and-so, I'm doctor this, I'm apostle that. I've got all these titles. I've got all these positions and isms and schisms. Right. But on the inside, I'm literally dying. Yes, I'm dying on the inside. And that's why I tell people all the time, I don't want to see one side of you. I want to see both sides of you. So it's me to judge how I feel about you. I'm not judging you. It's my choice if I want to be around you or I accept you. But I don't want no one-sided person. I like to laugh. I like to have fun. I know you have some ups. I know you have some downs. So if I'm down today, sister girl, I want to talk about some of my downfalls, you know, right. so I can get free. But you up all the time and never show me the other side of you. I'm always being in this denial. Wow. And you know what? That's really sad. Because if you're up all the time, I'm going to ask you the question, what's your popping? Yes. <laughs> Are you high on something? something? That you up all the time? No. And that and that's the, to go back to what we was talking about, we're living in a fantasy world. Yes. And, and it's time to come out of the fantasy world and come into the real world. Because they said the joy of the Lord is your strength. And the, the word tell you you're going to have some up and down days. And i never seen nobody have an up day every day. I, if they do, I wish I know how they did it. I have some bad days, some bad hair days, uh -huh. some bad attitude days, some days where I just don't feel like getting out of bed. Amen. And I admit it. I press through it. I move forward. I get on up out of bed, get shower, shake it off, uh -huh. and then keep going. Yes. But there are some days when you just don't feel like it. That's it. 
And I'm I, I, sorry to say that people won't face that reality. Right. And say, you just need to admit it. I don't feel like it. Uh, the apostle that is a good friend of mine, she said, some days I just don't feel like being saved. Mm -hmm. She said, I just want to stay in the bed in my pajamas and not go preach, not do anything. Mm -hmm. I just want to stay in the house. And I understand that some days you just shut it down. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. You know, I'm going to say this. When I don't want to be bothered with nobody and I don't want to be uh, the preacher, the pastor, I just want to be a girlfriend today. Mm -hmm. I get my purse, get my pocketbook, and go on and catch the bus, and I get on the bus, go wherever I want to go, <laughs> and it. I do just what I want to do. If I want to laugh, I laugh, because I want to live, you know, and when he said, I come to give you life and life more abundant, it's not all the time he's saying that you live in Christian all the time. I think about when Jesus went to the wedding, Absolutely. and uh, my God. And his mama punning him out. I believe Jesus come to say, I've come to party. But his mama said, we do this, Jesus. And Jesus said, ain't my time. You know? And this is where people cannot draw other people because you could be too saved and people feel like it's no fun in Jesus. That's it. And see, it's fun in it. It's fun. It's so much fun. I love Jesus. Some people say, God, this woman crazy. But I have fun. I, I break it down in a minute, you know, because this is the way I feel in him. And I feel like Jesus wants us to have fun and not to look at the storm as being a crutch. But he said, through your storm, it gives you strength, it gives you power, it gives you joy, it gives you endurance, it gives you an opportunity to push you where he wants you to go because he have a place for you. And you look in the same way all the time. Well, what do you get? If you was going through a storm right now, or you've been in a storm, and you might be about to go through a storm, what we want you to do is grab this information Grab hold of this idea that although I may be about to go through it, I don't want to, as I'm going through it, I don't want to stay in it. I want to find the peace that is in the midst of my storm. And if you can grab hold to the, just the small amount, the most minute particle of your peace while you're in the midst of your storm, I promise you, you will come out of that storm and look back and say, wow, I made it through. Now I want you to stay tuned and I'll be back in just a moment with more of The Exchange. Exchange, And our subject today, finding peace in the midst of your storm. Now let's talk about this subject, Apostle Sarah White. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the peace side of that. We've talked about the storm. Let's talk about how they're going to find peace in the midst of the storm. Okay, let me tell you about how I get my peace. There we go. <laughs> you know, a lot of people don't believe in screaming. When I'm in a storm and I feel like I need to let pressure off, I get in my house, I do me a great big scream. And when I scream, things begin to fall off. And then I begin to feel the peace. Then I begin to give myself a dance and a praise. And then I look up at my, I don't call him Jesus. See, all the people call him Jesus. I have such a relationship mm -hmm. with him. I don't call him Jesus. I call him my whoopie poo poo. See, <laughs> I, come on, my now. Whoopie -poo -poo. he's my whoopie. Mm -hmm. uh, and I begin to talk to him like I love you and I adore you. And I begin to talk to him like I would talk to a normal person and then he'll come out with something and I bust out the laugh and then I have my peace. That's good. See, that's why I say in the midst, midst of my storm, he always said, get a relationship. A lot of people think a relationship with Jesus is just all the time in the Word. 
But Jesus is such fun. Yeah. He like you to call him a whoopie poo poo. Because see, he got many names, so you can make up your own name. That's right. Just like you do with a natural man, you don't call Greg all the time Greg. You call, call him out him. here, but you call him, him something Paul. else in the house, don't Paul, you? Paul, Paul. Oh, Paul, Paul. See, Paul, don't Paul. it make you feel good when you call him my Paul, 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 Paul. See, that's the way I feel about Jesus. That I put that out. I call Paul, him my whoopie poo poo, <laughs> and it makes me feel good. Yeah, and I feel like peace. You know, that's so true. When I'm going through storms, I have found several ways to just relax. Mm -hmm. You know, I will clean my house, sis, and I'll put some music on sometimes, mm -hmm. and I will just go through and clean the house. Mm -hmm. And I find such a, a peace and a, a way to relax in cleaning the house right. that is just really interesting. I used to like to go shopping, uh -huh. but that would just frustrate you because you're right. kind of broke and you know, bought mm -hmm. all the stuff you really right. don't want. Right. <laughs> You got all this stuff you to charge, stuff yes. you gotta take it all back. Mm -hmm. So that just puts more stress on yes. you. But cleaning, or I found that I will steal away to the prayer room at the ministry that uh, Pastor Greg and I oversee, mm -hmm. and I will just shut myself in for 12 or 24 hours, and it's so relaxing. Or there's another time I just went and I said, I'm just gonna go to a hotel and relax. Right. And just went to the hotel and just. It didn't change my situation, but it changed my perspective. you got to change your perspective. Amen. So every now and then, you need to change your scenery. Right. Because changing your scenery means, okay, I'm in this hotel room, I'm relaxing. I can see a different perspective mm -hmm. from just looking out this hotel window. There are times when I just got in the car and started driving. Yes. Or other times I'll go to the studio and I'll put my headphones on and just music. Right. You know, my mind, I just want to change my, my, my surroundings. Yes. And if you can change your surroundings, you can change your perspective. And you can allow God to retool your mind. Mm -hmm. He said by the renewing of your mind. Right. But the word says the renewing, renewing. of your mind. Right. So every now and then you renew your mind by renewing your, renewing your surroundings. Yes. And you know, and that's a good thing, but people like to stay in the same mold. And so if you're in the same mold, the enemy knows the mold that you in, so we're going to keep you not peace, keep you disturbed. Yeah. You know, and sometimes I just sit in and just look at the animals, and I'm amazed at the the squirrels, how they stand up and they look, and, they, and it just different things just give me peace, you know. And walking every day, I get out and walk at the calmness when nobody yeah. around, and just enjoy walking. One day I was walking, so I was just crying and talking to the Lord, and it was just a calm that just came over me. And you know, we miss the beauty of the Lord not seeing what he had created. Exactly. I look at the trees, I look at different houses, and I watch God's people and seeing the disturb them. I said, Lord, give them peace. Give them peace. And sometimes what we disturb about is nothing. Thank you. Because we look at our, our, our giants, whatever the giant in your right. life is, we look at that giant and we say, this giant is huge. And it may be, if you go for a walk, because I love to walk too. Yes. And I found some of the solutions to some problems mm -hmm. walking, because I walk three miles, and by the time I get back home, the answer is like, yeah, there's the answer. answer. I have the answer. Yes. So I want to exchange my problems for some solutions. I don't want to stay in the midst of my mm -hmm. problem. I don't want to stay in the midst of my storm. I, as my friend, Dr. Tracy says, I don't want to stay catching hell. Yes. You know, I want to come out of that right. and move into a place because come hell or high water, you got to come out. That's true. You got to come you out. You got to come out. And you know why we ain't, why we not coming out? is because we don't put him in the middle of it. In the middle of your storm. In the middle. That's it. He said, I'll speak to the storm. Yes. But we don't let him speak. We just keep going. We keep going. Repeating the cycle. Cycle. And over and over. And over and over again. And it never changes. Never changes. If you don't solve the problem, you're going to repeat it. Yes. If you don't address that issue, that problem, whatever it is, it's going to come back around. You have to pass the test. you got to pass. You can't go to the second grade. To you pass the, the first test. grade. That's right. Pass the test. you got to And I don't think people think that they have tests. He don't tempt you, but he tests you. That's right. If you saying 
I want to be a preacher, boys. A lot of want to be pastors. <laughs> or something. Or something. But if you never pass the test of the storm, that he can use you in your pastoria. And trust you. And trust you. You cannot do the work. Look what he did with his disciples. They went through tests. Everyone. Everyone. They were so afraid. And everyone eventually they finally passed it. When they got through it, they saw yeah. the test. In the midst of the storm. In the midst of the storm. You're not going to pass a test till you go through the storm. You're not going to get peace till you go through a storm. You ain't going to know how to speak peace if you ain't have no storm. That's right. Because you want to you want to your peace. Want, no, you won't. And that's it. If you've never been through a storm, you can't appreciate you can't peace. appreciate peace. And I appreciate when when peace is in my life. Oh my Ooh, God! Don't you Lord. think so? Lord, thank you for the peace. Thank you. Thank you for the calm. Hallelujah. When the storm comes back around, you're gonna be praying and looking and believing for peace. But if you can just make it through, if you can just press through it, when you come out on that other side. You're going to have a testimony that's going to help some other women to go through, or some other men to go through. Go through. Say, so this is how I, how did you get through that? Well, this is what I did. This I'm, is what worked for amen, me. Amen. Amen. And if, you may have to tweak it a little bit mm -hmm. to make it work for you. Yeah. But why don't you try this? Give you, give somebody some kind of answer. You're right. You know, try this. Right. And if you don't work that way, then try it that way. Just tweak it a little yes. bit. Yes. Yes. But give me something to hold on to. Yes. The old people just say, reach beyond the break and hold right. on. Hold on. Reach beyond the break in your rope and hold on. Amen. If the break is here, reach up high. Amen. Don't just give up or give out. Reach beyond the break and Amen. hold on. And another thing, sis, you have to look at it too. You want peace, you but you got to look at every day for peace. Yes. You don't get up the same, oh God. Here's another day I got to go through. No, I'm getting up with my mind uh, fresh and looking at my problem in a different way. I'm not going to look at the problem. I'm going to look at the problem solved, the Thank peace you. maker. That's it. Because I'm looking for the solution. If I keep looking at my problem, my problem's only going to grow. Right. If you keep looking at your problem, your problem's only going to grow. And I just had to say that so you could look at me. See my face? Keep looking at your problem, it's going to grow. And it, and it's the thing about that, and that's what's wrong with a lot of people today. They look more at their problem and not yes. the problem solver. That's it. And I can say this, sis, God has really been so good to me and so in the area. I have been in places that I never thought I was in danger, but I was. Mm -hmm. But I was at peace in the midst of my danger. And a lot of people, Look at me sometimes. I walk a uh, walk a lot, and they say you better be careful. You better watch it. But I believe in the word. He said, "He that dwells in the secret place abides under the shadow of the Almighty." So I stay up on His shadow. I stay up on His shadow, so He protects in me, and I just keep walking. And sometimes I just stop and start talking to folks. They don't even know me. How you doing? What you what you know? You know? And I do that, and I feel so peace and calm in the midst of that. I don't care who it is. Someone don't speak. Hey, how you doing today? You know? And I feel such a peace, and and a lot of people say, Oh, you are a child of God. It makes so much about me being a child of God. I love people. Yeah. And I don't meet stranger. And I think about how God told me that while you in this, he said, don't you change. Don't you change who you are. Mm -hmm. That's right. Be who you are and what you are. So until he changed me, this is what you get. <laughs> That's it. Shakespeare said, to thine own self be true. And I'm true to myself. Yes. Be true to yourself. Yes. When you can face yourself, look in the mirror and say, I don't like that about myself, or I want to change that. Don't just pick out all the negative things about mm -hmm. yourself, but find the good yes. in yourself. Find the things that you want to change. If, you're, if you feel like you're overweight, 
start walking. Mm -hmm. I want to change the way my body looks. Uh, right. I was saying in one of the other shows about my jazzercise class. Yes. I wanted to do things different. <laughs> right. So I joined jazzercise. All right. The other lady that was here for another show that's a personal trainer who overcame cancer, she's buffing. I said, well, I want to look like you. Yes. I may get you to personally train uh -huh. me. Mm -hmm. So whatever, if you don't like your hair, change it. Yes. If you don't really like your hair, buy some. Right. They got nothing wrong, wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. It's still your hair if you buy. Look, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. And I thank God for that. And it's just how you feel about you. And I learned that God created me the way I am. And I thank him for that. Amen. And and I'm not ashamed who who I am and what I am. That's it. And so I'm peace about me. And so when you get peace about you and love you and enjoy you, then you can enjoy what surround the wherever you're around. That's it. Love the skin I'm in. Hey, Amen. I love it. We are so I want to tell you all this is one of my bad sisters. Beautiful, <laughs> amazing, and destined. Destined for greatness. She is one of the God women that God has selected to be a part of our bad sisters uh studio audience. So every week you're gonna hear women in the audience bringing questions to our panelist or our guest, and she is one of our bad sisters. You are watching The Exchange, and our subject has been finding peace in the midst of the storm. When you find that peace in the midst of your turmoil, and you're ready to exchange that thing so you can have something different in your life, the Lord came that you would have an abundant life. He came that you would have peace, joy, and contentment. He came that you would have all of the things that he promised you the day you were born. So, so many of us are facing, having to face ourselves and not knowing what direction to go in. Find the peace, find yourself the center of your storm. And when you find the center of the storm, that's where the calm is. When you find the center of the storm, that's where he is. When you find that center of your joy, your peace, and all of the things in your life that you've been promised, when you find that peace, you will have a life that is truly abundant. And our time is up today, but I want you to keep this in your spirit and be blessed. And remember, if you have a question, go to AskDrJackie at ITFTV.com and leave us a question, a comment, a prayer request, whatever you need. We're here for you, and I'll be with you again next week right here on The Exchange. Bye for now. insurance is on everybody.